Following the invasion of Kuwait by Saddam Hussein in the August of 1990, Her Majesty's government sent out an expeditionary force to protect Saudi Arabia as part of Operation Granby. Six, 41 and 54 squadrons, as well as 226 OCU Jaguars based at Coltishall, were tasked with targeting artillery and SAM sites, as well as recce and anti-shipping. Along with Tornado GR1s and Buccaneers, the Jaguars provided an excellent aircraft in the Gulf. Jaguars were ordered out into the Gulf on the 8th of August 1990, and on the 9th, 12 Jaguar GR1As flew out to the Gulf with a few spare airframes. The aircraft had to be prepared for war, and to be made suitable for the harsh desert conditions of the Gulf. Crews were given out anti-chemical and bacteriological jabs, they wrote wills and received NBC clothing. Jaguars underwent low-level attack training, and sadly one Jaguar crashed in these preparations. Flight Lieutenant Keith Collister hit a ridge whilst doing a low-level bank. Overnight, the unique sandy pink colour was applied by a makeshift team of painters to the Jaguars, the same which was applied to most of the RF aircraft sent to the Gulf, apart from the Victors, Nimrods, Tornado F3s and some Tri-Stars and VC-10s. With some rehearsals and training flights made, the Jaguars and their crews were getting closer to deployment. With final preparations complete and paint still wet, Jaguars headed out to RAF bases in Oman and Bahrain. To get up to full potential, the Jaguars had to train in the Gulf. Upon arrival at thumb rate, no time was put to waste as the Jaguars conducted low-level training runs. Just a few years prior, the Jaguars had undergone a program, which would make RAF Jaguars more comparable to other variants of the Jaguar, which included overwing pylons for two AIM-9L air-to-air missiles. CRV-7 unguided rockets were also added to the Jaguars' arsenal. Although the initial integration with the Jaguars was not entirely successful, and the CRV-7s were withdrawn from a period of two weeks, while the internal software was rewritten. On the 30th of January, a Jaguar sank a 1,120-ton landing craft using the CRV-7 and 30mm Aden cannon fire. Upon re-entering service, it proved to be much more successful, and although its two weeks absence period was extremely beneficial, it still prompted the RAF to add a new type of ordnance to the Jaguar. The role of the Jaguars was not rigidly tied to a specific tasking like the Tornado GR1s were. The Jaguar's original role was to attack the Iraqi army with low-level assaults, using mattress SNEV unguided rockets, 1,000-pound unguided bombs, and the original BL-755 cluster bombs. In October of 1990, the British Joint Headquarters suggested that the Jaguars would be extremely vulnerable at low level, and a possibility of conducting higher altitude operations was suggested. The 1,000-pound bomb was the only ordnance for the Jaguar suited for medium-level operations, as hitting a small target with a 1,000-pound bomb proved to be unnecessary and alternatives were looked into. With the American-made CBU-87 Rock I-2 cluster bomb, which was also currently in service with the USAF at the time, so there wasn't too much hassle getting them onto the Jaguars. Standard recce pods and newer Vinten pods were also used. Several other reasons as to why the Jaguar wasn't suited for low-level attacks in the Gulf included the fact that the Jaguar could only operate during daytime, and was fitted with inferior electronic countermeasures compared to the Tornado GR1. The Jaguars also saw most of their combat in the restricted airspace over Kuwait, where the Iraqis had placed most of their ground-based air defences. This was ultimately recognised by the RAF, and the Gulf War highlighted the fact that low-level tactics did not provide protection against ground-based air defence, and showed the effectiveness of medium to high-altitude release of guided ordnance. Now back to the action in the Gulf. Along with 18 Tornado F3s, the 12 Jaguars were the first frontline aircraft to go in. However, an interdiction group of 49 Tornado GR1s were taken to the Gulf, however were hard to maintain in the hard conditions of the Gulf. Therefore, Buccaneers were sent in. You can have a look as to why the Buccaneers were used in the Gulf by watching my video on it. There should be a link in the description. The Buccaneers would usually designate the lasers so that the bombs carried by either Jaguars or Tornadoes could be successfully and accurately put on the target. Due to geographical reasons, the Jaguars based at Oman were repositioned to Bahrain. Soon on the 17th of January 1991, the air war began, and the Jaguars were thrust into a fray of coalition aircraft. There were some concerns to the effectiveness of the Jaguars, as they had been training for low-level attacks rather than medium-altitude attacks. On the 18th, attacks on vehicles, barracks and storage facilities commenced, the day after SAM sites and artillery sites were also targeted. There were some aircraft which suffered from light damage to their airframes, primarily from fragmentation, but none too serious. Most of these missions were conducted with coalition aircraft, as well as refueling from RAF Victors and Tristars.
A month later on the 28th of February, a ceasefire occurred where the Iraqis had been driven out of Kuwait. Crews were still placed on a two-hour readiness. With no losses in combat, and with only seven sorties lost to maintenance problems, the Jaguars had survived the first Gulf War. It definitely wouldn't be good of me if I didn't mention the ground crews, who displayed competence and discipline, and who often get overlooked by pilots who carried out the daring missions, but they too helped the aircraft stay in the air and help liberate Kuwait. Contrary to what the French took away from the Gulf War was that the RAF believed that the Jaguar was a very capable aircraft. The Jaguar underwent several new modifications, such as a better heads-up display, and became the Jaguar GR3. The GR1 stayed in the Gulf, conducting further operations in northern Iraq, and then going on further deployment to support the United Nations operations in the former Yugoslavia. Here you can see Jaguars returning back to Koltashul on the 13th of March, 1991. In a few weeks, that will be exactly 30 years ago. The ground crew returned in a VC-10, here you can see some of the nose artworks for some of those Jaguars. With the happy return from the Gulf, I think that wraps up the video quite nicely. Please make sure to like, subscribe and leave a comment. It would help a lot. As always, thank you for watching and have a nice day. And stay safe in these difficult times.